Welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. In our show, we aim here to help you create a better relationship with your money. And today on the show, I wanna talk about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Now, we've talked about this before, but as we're ending 2023, heading into 2024, which we're going here in about a month or two, I wanna talk about some things that we should be doing or looking at before these provisions sunset, okay? We all know this is the TCGA or some of us know as the Trump tax cuts. Again, they're set to expire by the end of 2025. So as we head into 2024, the year before, I wanna share this, that the sooner we act on all these things by being proactive, the more options I think we will have to take advantage of really today's lower rates. But before we get started, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. So real quickly, a little background here, okay? The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, when it was enacted, is currently scheduled again to sunset at the end of 25. All right, meaning this for everybody, significant changes I think are on the horizon, if you will, for taxpayers, all of us. I've talked about this before, but we're getting closer and closer. So I want everyone, again, to be aware of this. And I think now on any time really is to understand how these implications of this and consider some strategies to talk with your partner, your advisor, your CPA to help mitigate some of the potential tax risks. Uh, now with the TCGA, these tax cuts, uh, here many of you looking back, it brought really massive changes to the tax code for both businesses and individuals. Now along with, I think, large and permanent tax cuts to corporate profits, these tax cuts lowered individual tax rates by restructuring the tax brackets. They almost doubled, by the way, the standard deduction, which is huge. You know, and you know, by this time it was around 13,000 and then went to 24,000 and they decoupled the income threshold for capital gains taxes from the ordinary income tax brackets to basically benefit the higher income tax players, which is a good thing, and effectively doubled the lifetime gift and estate tax exemption. Now, all of these are non-permanent changes. They're set to expire 1231-25, December 31st of 2025. And I think, you know, at this point currently, if nothing changes, what we're seeing and what we're planning for and what many economists and tax planners are looking at is they'll revert back to the pre jobs and tax cut levels. So how might this impact your plan? A couple of things to consider. First and foremost, I wanna talk about estate and gift tax for a second. Now, as of 2023, this year, individuals can currently transfer up to $12.9 million and a married couple can transfer a total of up to $25 million. Now, this is either during your life or as part of your estate without triggering federal gifts or estate taxes. Again, talk with your estate planner about this for your specific situation. For many of you, you may not be hit by this, but it's important to note that over time, this might matter, okay? So if no legislative action is taken, the historically high exemption amount will be cut in half for the year 2026. And as a result, if your taxable estate exceeds those exemption amounts, there's some estate planning strategies that you wanna consider. Some things to consider here is annual gift of cash, uh, 529 accelerated gifts, uh, maybe a dynasty trust. All these are just a couple things to consider. And I'll add here one more, irrevocable life insurance trust or ILETs, right? These are all things to consider when it comes to an estate. Now, shifting over to income and capital gains tax considerations, state income tax brackets are also slated to revert back to, again, the pre-jobs and tax cut levels. For example, the top tax bracket uh, currently is 37%. That will increase to 39.6 if nothing is done before these sunset. Now, I think many wealthier taxpayers can expect a measurable increase in their effective tax rate. Now, in light of this, you might wish to explore some opportunities to accelerate income when and where uh, possible, like over the next couple of years to take advantage of what we know as this lower tax bracket right now. These might include converting uh, traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs, something I talk about often, or maybe harvesting capital gains, You know, realizing some of those gains while you have a lower tax bracket. Think of the old saying, right? A bird in the hand is worth more than two in the bush. Now, I think more importantly than anything, when you talk about something like a provision like this, uh, expiring or anything like that is always, you know, on the Make Your Money Matter show we talk about, I relate it back to planning because having an effective and cohesive plan in place matters because none of us, right? None of us knows what the future holds. And with any form of planning, the more time you have to prepare, the more options you'll have available to you in terms of your investments and your retirement. The proper diversification of your asset also really matters here, right? You know, here with the help of tax professionals and financial planners, you can go through and explore some of these strategies I mentioned to increase your likelihood to be more efficient when it comes to things like your taxes. And I'll share this. I don't think anyone here wants to pay more taxes. So looking at some of these things advantageously ahead of time matters for the success of your overall financial future. 
Hey, I hope you enjoyed that today. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a single episode. And always remember to make your money matter.